Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Rumbuka strikes back at Rote Mumu. Half of health budget used on diabetics. And Lautoka Mill breakdown frustrates lorry drivers. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Smith. The internal turmoil and conflict within Sudelpa is escalating even further as party leader Sitiveni Rumbuka today slammed his colleague, former leader and current Sudelpa parliamentary member and opposition leader Rote Mumukepa for making cr critical comments regarding the running of the party. During Sudelpa's annual general meeting last week, Rote Mumu asked the party and its leaders how they can run a government when they cannot even pay their own youth party workers. Ali Kimbia with the story. It's a situation that any political party wants to avoid on the eve of a national general election. But Sodelpa doesn't seem to be able to shake off the battle between the new party leader and the old one. Sitiveni Rambuka and Rotemu Mukepo's increasing disenchantment with each other is in the spotlight once again. Although in damage control mode, Rambuka says... Rotemumu's latest negative outburst is plain and simply irresponsible because it's hurting the party. I think it's not fair and uh, irresponsible for a high-ranking official of the party to be saying that. Uh, it will hurt the party, but we'll just have to uh, take it as uh, probably the spur of the moment and uh, probably... Uh, pressured by her own interest in the, in, in the welfare and, uh, and the well-being of the workers in her office. This is not the first time Kepa has made comments against the party since her removal as party leader last year. However, the new party leader Rambuka says Kepa's latest negative comments about his leadership will not hinder his party's progress. No, it should not. It will be just a hurdle that we can overcome. Uh, we can hurdle over and, uh, and move on. Uh, it, uh, every hurdle we come up against makes us stronger. Although the continued public confrontation between Rambuka and Kepa will most likely create doubts among supporters, Rambuka claims it won't. And in this case, uh, a senior member of the party has uh, said those things. Uh, we will just have to say well. Uh, she was probably saying that as uh, the prime uh, officer employing the workers. It's now evident that the split within the party is growing wider by the day. And with the 2018 general elections around the corner, Sodelpa will have to dig deep and scrape the bottom of the damage control barrel to avoid further embarrassment if they are to have any chance of convincing distended party supporters of giving them the take to form the next government. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Meanwhile, opposition leader Rote Mumu Kepa in a statement this afternoon said she will not comment further on the matter. Meanwhile, the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption still needs time to file void deal disclosures in Sidelpa leader Siti Veni Rumbuka's case. The prosecutor informed the court that they are still finalizing Rumbuka's statement and will be served on Monday. Meanwhile, Rumbuka's lawyers said they need the disclosures before Wednesday as Rumbuka will be out of Suva from the 11th to the 20th of this month. Rumbuka is charged by FICAC under Section 24 of the Political Party's Registration, Conduct Funding and Disclosures Act of 2013. Diabetes Fiji today revealed that 50% of the health budget is spent on diabetics. The organization says while the accuracy of a recent World Health Rankings report that Fiji tops the list for the highest diabetes-related deaths is debatable, the issue remains that the disease is a huge problem for the country. Kritika Kumar reports almost 1,700 people die annually due to diabetes. Diabetes is now our number one killer disease with more young people falling victim to it. In their 20s and 30s who are dying and being amputated. So it is a major problem, it is a major burden 
on our health system in our country. Akbar says during a recent diabetic clinical workshop, the participants unanimously agreed that the present approach of fighting the disease has failed. This is not surprising. It has been highlighted in recent studies by steps, by who. Uh, and the major contributing factors to this failure are the lack of affordable, of, of affordable healthy food choices, effective education, and accessibility to health services. Meanwhile, Professor Eddie McCaig says people should not shy away from regular health checkups. Our problem is our patients, are, our people are coming too late. So we have no option but to cut their leg off. Diabetes Fiji believes a new approach is needed to educate the people. The organization believes diabetes needs to be part of the cabinet agenda and it needs to sit within the office of the Prime Minister, which will ensure a concerted and coordinated effort of all relevant ministries and departments. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The ATS Employees Trust former Chair J. Deer Singh has been sentenced in absentia to three months imprisonment by the Lautoka High Court. Singh was found guilty of contempt of court for a statement he made during the air ter airport terminal services strike. In January, during a press conference, Singh made allegations against the judiciary, saying it was controlled by one minister. A bench warrant has been issued against Singh, who resides in Australia and was not present in court. He has also been ordered to pay $9,000 in court costs. The judge mentioned that if Singh had pleaded guilty in the first place, he would have received a suspended sentence. West Lorry drivers are frustrated as they are still waiting for answers from the Lautoka Sugar Mill management on when the crushing will resume. The mill began crushing on Monday but has encountered some problems during the week. Philippe Naikaso reports the drivers claim they have been getting mixed responses from the management since. Many of these lorry drivers have been waiting to offload their cane since Wednesday. They say the mill breakdown is costing them a lot. Yesterday I come here at 9 o'clock and FSC is it's not working properly. And last night at 8 o'clock they tell us there's a six hours breakdown but they still can't make it. More than 200 cane trucks can be seen parked outside the Lutoko mill with cane drivers travelling as far as Rakiraki to deliver the cane here at the Lotoka mill. 9 o'clock we came here, so we are waiting for the mill. They can't, you know, some problem there in the mill. And uh, we have uh, difficulties for the food and everything. Eh? Some of these drivers claim they are not being given straight answers on the status of the mill breakdown. Yes, this is one area that we drivers are facing. From the mill to the field officers, I believe there is a breakdown in communication because if there were problems with the mill, the field officers should have been notified so that the quota is not given. Meanwhile, the FSC says the mill experienced a gearbox failure earlier today after crushing continuously since early Thursday morning. It says repairs will be completed overnight. The FSC also stated that lorry drivers have also been told they can leave their trucks behind and they'll be given rides home and back to the mill by FSC. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Still to come, another multi-million dollar drug bust. And sailors responsible troubled over Arifinis Kiro sinking. Stay with us. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong number of number two and a serre. Oya was it size, a lambasa, and the teletain of a wrong number of them, number two and a serre. We have the Tumeli, a corner town of Hingatoka, Teletakin and a wrong number of them, number two and a serre. Never go funny in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bula FM, number two and a serre. Bula FM, number two and a serre. Law enforcement agencies have seized another huge haul of cocaine, this time on an island in the Lao Group. A total of 31 bars weighing 40 kilograms, estimated worth of around $40 million, was found on the island and secured by the police, Fiji Navy and Revenue and Customs Service officers. There have been no arrests. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio says they acted on information received from the islanders. FRCS Chief Executive Viswanath Das says surveillance of coastal communities is a challenge. 
The second suspect alleged to have been involved in the unlawful importation of illicit drugs and ammunition at Denarau last month appeared in the Nandi Magistrates Court today. 45-year-old John Nikolik was produced in court today and charged with one count of unlawful importation of illicit drugs, one count of unlawful possession of illicit drugs, and one count of failure to declare arms and ammunition to a customs officer. Nikolik had been in hospital until yesterday after allegedly consuming an unknown substance during the raid on his yacht at Port Denarau. The Australian national was remanded and his case will be recalled at the Lautoka High Court on the 17th. In their raid, officials seized 15 kilograms of cocaine as well as ecstasy tablets, all with an estimated value of 20 to 30 million dollars, as well as ecstasy, sorry, as well as undeclared currency, guns, and ammunition. Meanwhile, Nikolik's wife, Yvette, faces similar charges. Four accused naval officers responsible for the grounding of the RFNS Kiro on July 14, 2016, took the stand during mitigation today. The four, Lieutenant Commander Saula Tuilevuka, Lieutenant Samuela Vikaitonga, Lieutenant Ben Salavakao, and Ensign Michael Brown, appeared before a general court martial at the RFMF headquarters in Nambua. Akosita Tale has more. Character witness Navy Commander Captain John Fox informed the court Lieutenant Commander Saula Tuilevuka has more than 25 years of executive level leadership, is a reliable Navy officer and a go-to person who undertakes his duty well. In his own mitigation, 40-year-old Tuilevuka said he's never run a vessel aground, but he regrets unintentionally not submitting a report on the operational sea check conducted on Kiro. Character witness Fleet Operations Officer Commander Timothy Natuva told the court he's known D.K. Tonga for more than 16 years. He said D.K. Tonga saved his crew at sea during the height of tropical cyclone Winston and distributed food to affected islands after the monster cyclone. The third accused, Lieutenant Ben Salazakao, said he's been remorseful over the Kiro incident but has continued to serve the Navy diligently. And the fourth man responsible, 23-year-old Ensign Brown, told the court the past two years have been an emotional and psychological burden. The judge advocate asked Brown if he received any counseling while experiencing psychological trauma, to which he replied no. The court martial has been adjourned to next Tuesday for sentencing remarks from the prosecution. Akosita Tali, FBC News. A brochure informing Fijians of their right to vote freely in the general election was launched today by the Human Rights Commission and the Fijian Elections Office. Human Rights Director Ashwin Raj says this articulates the right to what political participation entails, the features of free and fair election and human rights standards. Kelly Vavala reports. With the upcoming general election, the Human Rights Commission wants to ensure that eligible voters are well versed in their right to vote. The brochure also talks about the fact that human rights and freedoms come with responsibility. The right to freedom of expression does not give one the right to promote hate speech or incite violence based on race, religion, ethnicity or other prohibited grounds of discrimination. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim says having the Human Rights Commission on board is vital to the quality of work they do. It's an excellent compilation of the basic uh, standards that are to be met for a free and fair election and more so the most important one being the right to vote, the right to secrecy of the ballot. The Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission will be one of the key bodies that the Electoral Commission will be looking for their reviews and comments post-election. The FEO says they will incorporate the brochures in the awareness programs during the distribution of the material around the country. Kelly Badala, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Fijian Elections Office will conduct its final refresher training sessions over for, ten, sorry, for over 10,000 election officials next week. Supervisor Mohammed Sanim says each election official can verify their details on FEO's system and find out if their allocated polling stations have changed. This training will be only for those officials who have signed their contracts and so far, since everybody has signed their contracts, uh, they are to, uh, to attend this workshop uh, as a mandatory requirement. If you do not attend the refresher training, you will not be permitted to work on election day. In sports later with Jamie, foreign nations, IFIJI's golden weightlifter, but up next is Akosita with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. 
Consumer Council Chief Executive resigns. And in growing Fiji, Rosie Holidays opens multi-million dollar warehouse. Stay with us. Dola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigai, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, Fijian Holdings Limited Chief Executive Nuzar Farid says they will soon start maintenance of the Ratu Sukuna house, which is estimated to cost a little over $1.2 million. Farid says they will take advantage of the tax incentives announced by the government for modernization of buildings in towns and cities. For capital investments above $1 million, 125% tax deduction and 25% investment allowance will apply. Consumer Council Chief Executive Pramila Kumar has resigned. Council Board Chair Raman Dahia says they have accepted her resignation. Dahia says Kumar has been with the organization for 12 years and during this period she lifted the image and visibility of the council to a high level. He adds the board appreciates and acknowledges her contribution. And we now join Gary from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Let's look at the latest in the foreign exchange market. Major currencies were quiet early this morning as investor caution prevailed ahead of Washington's implementation of its threatened tariffs on Chinese goods. Since China is Australia's biggest export market, the Australian economy is particularly vulnerable to any slowdown in the Chinese economy. Analysts have also cut their short-term forecast for the New Zealand dollar, but again predict an eventual recovery. Meanwhile, the U.S. jobs report is due later in the day, and that too, could affect the markets. It'll be interesting to see how all this might impact the market in the days later. And that's all from me, Vinaka. Now taking a look at the currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Our dollar was on the rise against the Chinese yuan as well as the Japanese yen and showed minor slippage against the other currencies we cover. On the commodities market, oil prices continue to drop, closing below $73 a barrel. Gold was up a few cents at $1,256 per ounce, and silver rose about a dollar to close at $16.01 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, Nandi Bay's Rosie Travel Group has set up a $5 million warehouse in Amaka. The new warehouse will provide storage for over 250,000 items and props that the Travel Group deploys as part of their event, theme, and management services. Philippe Nekasso has more. This new purpose three-story complex in Nandi will cater for the growing and lucrative overseas meetings and incentives market. Sends a clear signal to the international markets that Rosie Events is serious about delivering world-class event solutions to international professional conference owners. And I'm happy to note that it's not only restricted to the hotels and the uh, tourist industry. Rosie Events has also partnered with Fiji Airways Tourism Fiji and various hotels to attract more high-value spenders in the niche meetings, incentives, conferences and events space. One of the things, Chris, that's really important to our company is the figure 11. Because we know that every 11 visitors that we somehow can inspire to visit Fiji, those 11 visitors creates one full-time job for a Fijian somewhere and two other jobs indirectly. So when your 300 strong or so conference arrives at Nandi Airport, they are secured in the fact that 27 people that very moment will have a full-time job. The investment by Rosie Events has also created 10 new jobs. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thanks, Akasita, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, Fiji 7's players to receive incentives if they win the Rugby World Cup 7's 
and Young Suba side as a spot in Skipper Cup final. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock in Lambasa. I'm Soname, Nasori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Single Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jacks Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. While expectations are always high when the Fiji Airways Sevens team head into a tournament, it's usually at its peak when it comes to the Melrose Cup. Now gunning to claim the prestigious trophy for a record third time, government has indicated incentives may be on offer if they do. Stella Tawoy reports. Sports Minister Laisenia Tutumbo says talks are underway for our team to receive incentives. Tutumbo has not confirmed an amount yet, but says if they win, they could get rewards. We'll come uh, into that when we finish with the World Cup, yeah, because uh, that's what we do. When uh, the team is uh, successful, they deserve and uh, we'll come into that. This could also be a good example for other sports as well. We have given to the Rio Olympics and also the, the Commonwealth uh, gold medals, silver medals and bronze uh, medals. Not only on rugby. But, also, but, uh, but this particularly is for, for Meanwhile, Sevens coach Gareth Baber says they'll take one game at a time. Well, we take nobody uh, for granted. Uh, we don't have the right to do that. You know, maybe at the end of Sunday when we come out uh, with the winning medal, then you know I'll be uh, I'll be talking differently. But as as it stands, it's uh, it's a matter of taking each game on its merit and making sure that we uh, are humble enough to make, get through each game. The team is now in Utah before heading to the World Cup in San Francisco. Fiji will open the Rugby World Cup 7th campaign against the winner of the qualifying Match 7. It will either be Japan or Uruguay on the 21st of this month. Stella Taoi, FBC Sports. Since stepping down from weightlifting Fiji, Commonwealth Games gold medalist Eileen Vikamatana has received invitations from other countries and local sporting federations to utilize her talents with them. While well, there's been little to no progress with the current impasse between the Levuka Club and its parent body, the Fiji Sports Commission says its role in the process is limited. Meli Tavanga has more. Sports Commission Chair Peter Maisie says their policy is to never intervene to the affairs of sports federations since it's an internal matter. The Sports Commission is tasked under its decree to look at, to mediate on issues that come up. So. The issue with weightlifting has come to the notice of the Sports Commission now, and yes, we are having talks with the parties. However, New Zealand weightlifting coach Gary Marshall, who would love her to be in the New Zealand camp, he says she's a top qualified weightlifter, and no doubt about that, that they haven't received any application from Eileen at the moment. Vic Matana has stated in her letter that she did not want to change countries, but what weightlifting Fiji has done to her is unforgivable. She says if she has to stay away from the sport for one whole year, she would do that. And if there's any country offering her a place, why not taking the chance? She says Athletics Fiji has also written to her showing their interest following her resignation. She says she received an email from Athletics Fiji wanting her to do throwing and rugby. Meanwhile, there should be an outcome by next week of the boycott talks between weightlifting Fiji and the Lebuka Club overseen by the National Sports Commission. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. The Suva rugby team has been the informed team of the 2018 Skipper Cup competition. Suva head into the knockouts on top of the points table with only one loss from six matches. They host Namoshi tomorrow at ANZ Stadium where they hope to pick up from where they left off in the preliminary round. Got a lot of experience in the team. Uh, there's plenty of players who have uh, been in the Bank PGs, the Warriors, the Rua, so we rate them highly. Um, and uh, it's of a good challenge for us because we have a lot of uh, young players coming into the senior team this year. For all the great football that's been witnessed at the World Cup so far, the tournament hasn't been without its controversial moments. Argentina legend Diego Maradona has once again caused a bit of a stir in the FIFA ranks 
this time putting a referee in the firing line. The Belgium football side has wrapped up preparations and is ready to face five-time FIFA World Cup champions Brazil in the quarterfinal tomorrow. Uruguay football star Edinson Cavani has returned to training but remains doubtful for the World Cup, for rather for the World Cup quarterfinal showdown with France. A Kia bird in a small Paris zoo has become the latest member of the animal kingdom to turn its hand, or in this case its beak, to predicting World Cup results. After the New Zealand women's sevens team won the Commonwealth Games gold and made a clean sweep of the last three women's World Series tournaments, you'd think they would have peaked then. Apparently not. This report from TVNZ explains how they've managed to improve more ahead of the World Cup in San Francisco. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. The Motorola Moto G6 and G6 Play has been hailed and users says it gives value for money. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, New media tonight, Motorola Moto G6 and G6 Play. What's the difference? Let's take a look. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello to you and to the weekend. It's Friday in the hood and how can we not love Fridays, especially if the weather is mostly settled and cool. So if we have plans for games or gatherings for the weekend, you will find out what the day will be like. Taking a look in the west, mostly sunny, but the nights are pretty chilly. Eastwards from Pek Suva, another cool and overcast day. And up north, quite muggy and expect a cold night. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.51 a.m. with low tide at 7.05 a.m. Sunrise at 6.39. For tomorrow, I'm so thrilled to announce the weather will be mostly clear. Tomorrow's temps, mild temperatures in low 30s. And looking further on to Sunday, light showers can be expected. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, which team are you betting on to win the first two FIFA World Cup quarterfinals? Brazil because I love the players and the coats. I'm supporting France because they've been impressive throughout the full games and even in the last 16. And Belgium as well because uh, they are the underdog team. I think uh, France will uh, win the game. Uh, FIFA World Cup 2018 because uh, they are a very good team. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Rumbuka strikes back at Rote Mumu, half of health budget used on diabetics, and Lautoka Mill breakdown frustrates lorry drivers. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we're asking, are you happy with the new initiatives announced in the national budget? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day. This stunning shot was sent in by Hemant Kumar. The beautiful sunset was captured in Castaway Island. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. My Navneet Nan, Nambu Alumbua, is a friendly note. Mashur hai, waise Radio Fiji 2 bhi sabhi jagah mashur hai. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. Seema Nakasi se, mai Radio Fiji 2 pasand karti hu sunne ke liye. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. 
मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टोकर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देशे रग्बी फेम में से वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू फेम में से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन